The purpose of this video is to provide compliance assistance to testers conducting the VP1000 vacuum integrity test. Specific procedures can be found in the executive order, while test sequencing and additional district requirements can be found in the applicable permit attachment. Prior to testing, the tester should not only ensure the vapor recovery system and components are in a certified configuration, but use only the testing equipment specified in the procedure. The test begins here when the tester first removes the cap from the VP1000 test port and installs the vacuum gauge onto the port. The tester then authorizes the dispenser and listens for the activation of the vacuum motor. Once the operation of the vacuum motor has been verified, the tester then records the initial vacuum. At this time, if the vacuum motor does not activate or the vacuum is less than 60 inches water column, the VP1000 test fails. Here, the vacuum achieved was greater than 60 inches water column, and the tester closed the ball valve to the VP1000. With the VP1000 still running and the ball valve closed, the tester records the vacuum reading once again and begins timing for one minute. After 60 seconds, the tester then records the final vacuum. If the vacuum drops more than 4 inches water column in 60 seconds, the VP1000 test fails. If the vacuum motor stops operating at any time, the test also fails. After 60 seconds has passed and the final vacuum has been recorded, the tester then returns the ball valve to the original open position. Next, section B5 of the test requires dispensing of 0.5 gallons of gas into a portable testing tank and the vacuum to be recorded during dispensing. If the vacuum is less than 60 inches water column, the test fails. After 0.5 gallons has been dispensed and with the fueling point still authorized, the tester then moves to the other side of the dispenser. The tester then authorizes that side of the dispenser, verifies an audible increase in the vacuum motor, and dispenses another 0.5 gallons and records the vacuum during dispensing. If there's no audible increase in the motor or the vacuum falls below 60 inches water column, the test fails. The tester then turns off both sides of the dispenser and performs another audible test of the vacuum motor but in reverse order. If the VP1000 fails to activate or there is no audible increase on the other side of the dispenser, the test fails. Now the test is complete and here the tester is shown replacing the cap on the port and ensures the ball valve is in the open position. It is critical testers be familiar with test procedures and ensure they conduct the test only when the vapor recovery system is in the required test configuration. The district has observed testing when processor valves were in the wrong position or when the PV valve was not installed. Testing in configurations not specified in the executive order or in the test procedure may result in the test being invalidated. Not only are testers required to conduct this test in the sequencing specified in the permit to operate, testers must also ensure steps B3, B4, B5, and B6 are followed in order per the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. Improper test sequencing within the procedure itself will also invalidate the test results. It is critical testers properly replace the VP1000 test port cap. Failure to properly tighten the cap onto the test port may result in leaks impacting the system's ability to collect vapors, air ingestion, and related ISD alarms. 